Hey, what's going on everybody? Today, um, we're actually gonna be kind of doing a walkthrough of the truck and talking about what's coming, um, parts that I currently have ready to go on and what I'm gonna be ordering for it and, and kind of just the whole build process. So, stick around. All right guys, so the truck is a 2001 uh, Dodge Ram with the Cummins. Um, it is four by four. Um, it's got about 174,000 uh, miles on it. Transmission was rebuilt. I, I know um, it's unlikely that a Dodge transmission needs to be rebuilt, but this one, you know, is that one rare case. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it uh, got rebuilt like, I don't know, maybe th not even 3,000 miles ago. Um, so hopefully that one decides to hold on for a little bit. Um, let's start with probably maybe the most important part, um, and that is stickers on the back window. Um, yeah, there are none. Uh, moving on. My favorite part, guys, um, is the fact that I've changed the dash on this. Um, it's not a secret that the plastic in 2000s uh, and even the early 1990s were uh, pretty much garbage. So um, when I bought the truck, it had one of the cloth like covers over it and dash was in multiple pieces. Um, so like every time you drove it, you could just hear everything rattling and it was just distracting and frustrating. So um, that was one of the first things that I did to this truck, um, pulled the entire dash assembly out, put it on the tailgate and yeah, changed out the dash pad uh, or dash, the actual dash cover itself, and then changed out the bezel. And then also had um, the headlight switch was broken on it, so I replaced that. All those parts came from LMC Truck. Um, guys, if you're not familiar with LMC Truck, they've got uh, a bunch of like OEM replacement parts for late model trucks, or I guess early model trucks, like GMC, Chevy, Dodge. Um, they've got a lot of really good stuff if you're trying to restore something back to OEM. So check them out. Um, the carpet is stained in spots um, just from being 20 years old, but for the most part is in pretty solid condition. Um, back seat, it's uh, this front seat for it so you can see. It uh, has two tens in a box that are under the rear seat. Um, sounds pretty good, especially if you're listening to like some Creed or some Nickelback. It's pretty good. Um, but as far as that normal wear and tear and stuff on the truck from being 20 years old. So um, I don't really have a whole lot of crazy plans um, for the interior. Uh, my main focus is going to be under the hood and drivetrain and, and suspension and all that first. Uh, with this being as clean as it is, but um, I do want to change the headliner out to black. Would like to recover the original seats, probably with something like catskin leather, and, and do a uh, black leather with white stitching. Um, kind of do that contrast. I don't know. We'll see. Um, might be an issue with everything, like with the dash and all the door plastics being gray. So it might be. Uh, it might be a, a an actual project so we'll see all right so kind of talked about the interior a little bit um, I come over here to the driver's side and not bang mama's car all right guys so from the driver's seat um, gosh look at that dash uh, we've got the a pillar gauge pod uh, top we got trans temp middle we got fuel pressure and then um, we got boost pressure so the fuel pressure is um, plumbed into the fast system, which we'll go over here in just a second. Um, but apart from that, that is pretty much it. Um, let's see if we can get, yeah, 174, 526. Paint is not in terrible shape. I guess we'll run down the driver's side. Um, basically behind all four fender flares, there is um, marks in the clear coat. There's uh, some surface rust that run around the wheel wheels. Typical Dodge things. Um, but yeah, if you have the option to not put fender flares on your truck, uh, I would I'd try to not, i try to avoid that. Um, it just, it traps all the moisture against the paint and it's just not, it's not great guys, so. Um, I've got rust behind this side here and then all the way up around the wheel well there's pretty much little areas of, of surface rust 
and you can see it a lot better here. Um, ooh, look in there. It's not great. Um, so plan will be to replace um, both front fenders and then probably do in patch panels um, to take care of all that rust. So cool part is LMC truck provides a lot of stuff. Um, underneath, the rust isn't terrible. This truck did spend some time in Utah and has some rust uh, but, but it's really not terrible um, so my plan is pull the bed off um, and it's gonna fix the fuel pressure issue that I've got that I'll talk about um, pull the bed off um, sand everything down the frame and suspension and everything and then uh, I'm gonna go with Eastwood the rust encapsulator and then the satin like uh, chassis black so it'll take it back to a more uh, factory look it's not gonna be high gloss or anything like that um, it's definitely not not a show truck but just trying to restore it back to its uh, its original beauty 20 some years ago um, so that's coming here uh, probably in the next month or so uh, what month is it yeah about month you know next month or so yeah the frame is gonna get uh, completely redone and cleaned up um, it's really not terrible definitely Definitely gonna take a little bit of uh, a little bit of work, but we'll get that fixed up. That's missing. Not good. We'll get it fixed. All right, guys. Passenger side. It's really not any different than the driver's side. Um, underneath these fender flares, there is some surface rust and um, some issues here that are gonna have to be addressed. Um, but again, LMC truck and those patch panels are gonna come in pretty clutch. Um, little mud guard there seeing better days this fender as well is, is pretty rotten up in here um, so these are gonna go new pa uh, new fenders gonna be put in and then that should fix that whole issue um, eventually I'd like to get the whole truck repainted the plan will be to go uh, back to the original factory white um, that it came with um, but it's just kind of low on the priority list right now I'm just trying to get everything running well driving well um, and then we'll work on kind of the cosmetics later so so in the bed is one of these plastic liners um, this is actually gonna get taken out and then I'm gonna do the U-Pulls uh, Raptor liner so if you guys haven't seen that there'll be a video that I make just solely doing the bed liner but um, you can check them out they, they sell them on Amazon or you can go to U-Pulls site and um, it's there's a lot of really good view, uh, videos on YouTube that just show the process it's a spray and bed liner that you guys can do from home and super cost effective so that will be coming as well yeah mirrors um mirrors going to be getting replaced uh boost auto has got like some fourth gen style mirrors with power fold and defrost and all kinds of cool stuff um for pretty reasonable price honestly you can go onto their site and you can actually custom build them so um set them up however you want with marker lights turn signals all that stuff so um, check them out. There'll be a video of, of me installing them as well. So be looking for that. I painted the front end like I don't even know four years ago something like that um, and just Got excited pulled this stuff off did like a rough sand spray painted it with just over-the-counter spray paint did not use anything fancy at all and for the most part It's held up. Okay, but I knew I was gonna be getting new plastics because I mean, again, these things don't hold up very well. Shortly after I bought the truck, um, put a new steering gearbox in it. Um, steering on this really hasn't been terrible. Um, you can see the markings from the bolts there. I also did, um, and that was just like an O'Reilly's OEM replacement um, gearbox. It wasn't anything aftermarket. And then this is a Sinister Diesel um, uh, steering brace for the gearbox. It basically went in as soon as the gearbox did and that makes a huge difference um, And honestly If you've considered putting one in and held off um, I would there I think they're like 200 bucks and what they do is they help take um, The vibration and the abuse from the steering system off of the gearbox itself So it helps kind of brace everything up utilizing the bolts for the sway bar mount and um, for me, it was it was noticeable, you know, noticeably different driving down the road. If you hit a pothole or whatever, it just didn't feel like the steering got as squirrely. Um, if you have 
like really bad, like death wobble and stuff like that. Um, one could be if you have the, the original steering um, and not um, like an upgraded steering system, that could be part of it. But a uh, steering stabilizer that I'm gonna put on is not, is not the fix for that. Um, if you got, it, it's either the geometry of the steering or you've got worn out bushings. Um, there's, there's several things that it could be, um, but you wanna correct that before you put a steering stabilizer kit in there. Um, Cause that's, that's not gonna be your fix and it's gonna end up really quickly wearing out your steering stabilizer kit. And at least for the one um, that I have, they're, they're not super cheap. So, um, but I, thankfully I don't have that issue, but just kind of food for thought. All right guys, under the hood, we have an AFE stage two intake, um, or excuse me, cold air intake. Other than that, there really isn't anything else under here that's aftermarket. Um, just basically just gauges and that's, I don't even think that really counts. Um, so <clears throat> definitely gonna be some more things to come, um, but there's been a few other issues with the truck that really needed to get taken care of first. Um, so for the most part for right now, it's just gonna be a matter of, of getting this area all cleaned up and looking better. Um, there's, uh, there's like 20 years of dirt under here. So um, just gonna get that, uh, get that cleaned up in the coming videos. Um, and yeah, then we'll start working on the engine after that. Yeah, this is another one that uh, stuff's gotta go. It's all dry rotted and just falling apart. So that'll be getting tossed. Um, this light is a little crispy and that'll be getting replaced. Um, so a lot of the stuff that's wrong is just typical stuff of, uh, you know, it's got a shelf life. Um, that's uh, not terrible. That one's MIA. So I'm um, just gonna get some of these rubber pieces, uh, door trim, gas, stuff like that. It's just gotta get replaced and that's gotta go. All right, I don't know if you guys can see it. I think for the most part you can, but that is the catch can that's down there. Um, that is just kind of crudely zip tied. <laughs> um, it made contact with the fan, so it's got some holes in it and occasionally will kind of drip oil and stuff out of there. So that's gotta get, um, fixed before um, we do any of the front end coating or put the steering stabilizer on because I don't want oil getting dripped on it. I don't know how well you can see it because the sun's bright and stuff, but down there is your vacuum pump and the power steering pump. And they're kind of splined together and they've got uh, a few seals, one of which kind of repeatedly fails um, or has been known to fail. So um, that is actually starting to kind of drip seep whatever you want to call it a little bit um so i've got to get that taken care of also before i do any of the chassis and frame coating up front um if you go to replace both of those you can get them as like a set but they're pretty pricey um so what i'm going to do is um reseal them so there, it's, it's like i think five total pieces it's really not bad um this is the kit and the part number. You actually buy this off Amazon or your local Cummins um, dealer. But um, basically you pull both of those out, you separate them. Um, there's a main seal that uh, is, is the culprit that usually leaks. And there's a couple small O-rings and then a, just like a gasket for it to seal. It's really pretty simple. Um, but I'm gonna do a video on that, getting that fixed. I'm gonna do a video on the kitchen can, putting a new one of those in there. So that'll stop any of the little drips and just uh, residual oil that's kind of making its way around the front part of the engine um, and then down onto the like the uh, the axle and suspension so I've got to get that corrected before I can go in and degrease everything take it uh, get rid of the surface rust and then coat everything hey guys, so. the uh, lift is a five and a half inch uh, rough country lift that was installed um, shortly before I bought the truck um, it's just it's all our blocks in the rear. Coil springs up front and different shocks. So not a crazy expensive lift by any means, um, but may get changed down the road. I don't think I'm necessarily gonna go taller, uh, but just go with something a little bit higher quality and something to improve the ride. So we'll see. All right guys, as for the wheel and tires, these are 20 by 12 hostile sprockets. Uh, there are 35 by 12 and a half uh, 
Trailblade XT tires. Um, I think that these are hands down probably the worst possible tire that you can put on any vehicle. Um, I think these came as like a cheap wheel and tire kit that the previous owner bought and put on the truck. Um, personally, I'm not really a huge fan of them. Um, I don't mind the hostile wheels, but the tires on them are, are just terrible. Um, cannot keep traction, um, mainly because this truck has like 3000 horsepower. But um, no, they're just terrible tires. So um, that's on the to-do list as well. Honestly, I wanna go smaller down to like, um, like a 17, 18 at the largest. Um, still same size tire, uh, stick with the 35. And I would like to either go at 12 and a half or 13 and a half wide, but uh, I wanna go to less of an offset and um, smaller wheel, bigger tire. It's kind of my style. And honestly, to me, it's just more the style of this truck 20 years ago. So uh, for the most part, we've, we've covered just about everything. Um, there's a couple other things I'm gonna talk about that are wrong with the truck, but um, show you some of the parts that I've got for it right now. This will be one of the things that gets done to it within the next couple videos. And that is wheel bearings, hub assemblies for both sides, upper and lower ball joints for both sides. I'll throw a quick video in here that I took um, <clears throat> checking it with my oldest boy and at least the driver's side is shot. Also have a BDS steering stabilizer kit, so with Fox shocks, um, or, or Fox steering stabilizers, excuse me. Um, so that will go on soon, but not right away. There's a few things that gotta um, get corrected first. This truck has also had um, a fuel pressure issue, or lack thereof, that's just kind of kicked my butt um, a little bit, only because it's just, it was kind of weird the way it, it started to happen and then it got worse. So, the truck has a fast fuel system on it, and that is not the issue, but um, I have a gauge plumbed into the manifold here, and that was really kind of the saving grace, um, because what would happen is I was losing uh, fuel pressure, and if you understand how um, gauges work, it is telling you what pressure you have to that certain point and before that. So. If you see that fuel pressure gauge go to zero, um, for me, I knew that my high pressure side was not getting any fuel pressure, which um, if, if you're not familiar, that's a, a really bad thing for your VP44 um, or whatever truck you have. It's bad for the high pressure fuel pump to not um, have fuel pressure going to it. Most of these, they're fuel cooled. So the fuel going through them is actually what cools them off and keeps them from overheating and, and causing catastrophic damage, which is not cheap. I'm almost positive my pickup tube in the fuel sending unit in the tank um, is actually cracked. So if you look at some of the pictures of the ones from like the early 2000s, um, they're like an accordion style tube. So if you know what like a def jug, uh, that little filler neck um, that come with the def jugs looks like, um, that's basically essentially what it looks like. And it runs down to like a 45 degree and then another 45 degree and then go straight down into like the little pickup cup um, in the bottom of that sending unit. And I'm pretty sure up towards the top, almost between like three quarters and half a tank is where it's cracked. Because unless my truck is all the way full, um, I think when I was, the last time I was working on this problem was, um, I think it was like between, between half a tank and three quarter. Um, when I would turn right or left, didn't matter, my fuel pressure would go to zero. And then when I would go straight, uh, or straighten back out, my fuel pressure would build back up to like 16 PSI where it's supposed to be and would stay there. As long as I was driving straight, I maintained uh, perfectly fine um, fuel pressure. If I was sitting in the driveway, it was fine. It was only when I was turning that it would go to zero. So my theory is that pickup tube is cracked. When you turn, the fuel sloshes to one direction, it sucks air. Uh, and then when you straighten back out, the fuel levels back off and then it regains prime and then you're you're back in business so uh, when i pull this bed off or the, the main reason i'm pulling the bed off is because my driveway is not flat and i'm not trying to battle a full fuel tank rolling away on me or um just dealing with 
um, juggling a large fuel tank and spilling fuel over my driveway. And I don't really have anywhere to put um, that fuel once I do pull it out. So um, to me, it makes the most sense to undo like the six bolts that hold this on, the filler neck, all that, pull the bed off, clean up the frame, have full access to everything. I'm gonna do an aftermarket um, replacement for my fuel sending unit, and that's made by Fleece. Um, I'll, I'll, when I, I'm gonna do a video on that whole process and I'll, I'll put all the links and stuff in there, but you can find on uh, Thoroughbred Diesel, that's where I found mine. Um, but it's supposed to be made for trucks that have the aftermarket lift pumps, like an Air Dog or um, Fast or, or whatever you guys are running. The benefit of having the fuel pressure gauge where I have it is it's mounted at the Fast system that's about, I don't know, 18 inches worth of fuel line from the tank where it, where it draws its fuel. If I had it up closer to um, the VP44, it just gives me a much farther distance um, to have to, to work back from and troubleshoot. So if you're not sure how fuel pressure gauge works, really most gauges um, like hydraulic pressure and things like that, it's giving you the reading at that point and before. Um, it's not giving you a reading of anything after. So I know that if that fuel pressure gauge is reading zero at the fast system, my issue is between where that gauge is plumbed in and where it draws its fuel. So for me, um, it was only about 18 inches worth of troubleshooting. So um, obviously if it was like a loose hose clamp or something like that, um, I could see, honestly, I could see that issue being more consistent and not intermittent. Like, and, and honestly, every single time I would turn, that was when I was getting uh, that loss of fuel pressure, which to me, I feel like my theory is uh, is pretty accurate um, with that that pickup tube being cracked. Um, so obviously, um, there's probably pros and cons to installing the pressure gauge up by the VP44 or back here by the the supply pump. Um, so, but for me, I think it's kind of worked out in my favor. So that's kind of how I came to that conclusion. I think we've covered just about everything, um, guys. Where you see that truck sitting right now? is literally where you're going to see 99% of this work get performed. Uh, if it's got to get put up on jack stands and stuff like that, it's probably going to be um, down in the road in front of the driveway where it's flat. But apart from that, I mean, that's where I, I've worked on it most of the time anyway, is, is sitting in the driveway. So this is all going to be stuff that you guys can do from home. Um, I don't have any fancy lifts. Um, I actually don't really have any buddies that live super close to me. I've got one that lives about 45 minutes north that's going to help me out with getting the bed off and, and a few things here and there. But um, apart from that, 90% of what I'm going to do um, is going to be myself and my boys help me out. And um, yeah, so this is this is stuff you guys can do from home. And uh, some of the stuff we're going to learn, learn how it works out together. Cause like I've never done the spray and bed liner before. I've never, never done like the chassis coating and stuff like that before. Um, so we're going to essentially want to learn this together. So hope it turns out. Okay. Uh, if you guys have any questions on the truck, um, or something you want to see more of, uh, I'm, I'm just, just, you know, ask, ask away. Um, my hope is that uh, something that I'm, I'm working on or fixing here helps you guys get something on your truck fixed or at least motivates you to, to work on it. Um, you don't have to have a fancy shop to be able to work on your, on your vehicles. So that's kind of my theory. But um, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video and stick around for more.